I want to talk to you today a little bit about how to do closing submissions in a sexual assault case. And I'll outline a couple of differences between judge alone versus jury trials, because there's certainly different considerations. So, so first of all, in all of the sexual assault cases I've done, if it's a judge alone trial, I estimate it takes me between an hour to an hour and a half to do final summations in a, in a if it's a judge alone trial. For a jury trial, I like to keep it quicker. Juries lose interest. <laughs> you know, you want to keep things lively and, and, and so that you have their interest and people's attention spans only so long. So I like to keep my closing submissions hour. 45 minutes to an hour, I find, is, is pretty good. So what I do in a judge alone trial is I like to start with an overview of the position of the defense, that there's reasonable doubt um, that the accused should be acquitted. It's just basically an overview and a, and a skeleton outline of where I'm heading. Uh, I then head into all of the credibility and reliability issues. I start reviewing the complainant's evidence. And you're not reviewing all of the evidence, you're hitting the key points that, that establish reasonable doubt. What are the improbabilities, list of inconsistencies, what doesn't accord with common sense, why was there consent, and, and what doesn't make sense with their story. And, and that, that takes some time, and it, it has to be done in a, a very systematic and organized way. I like to start with the most important ones first in descending order as well. Uh, I'll then review if there's other evidence, or maybe police evidence, or maybe other peripheral witnesses. I like to also point areas out of reasonable doubt there that support my evidence. And also, you've got to deal head on with problems in your case too. You've got to, you've got to show how it's not a problem or soft pedal it or show that, that you have evidence that, that counteracts that. So that's all about credibility and reliability. I talk a little bit about the law. It depends on the experience level of judge because some judges, um, believe it or not, in the Superior Court of Justice, we might have a newer judge who doesn't even know much about criminal law yet. So you might have to explain more about the law, which might lengthen my submissions. I might present case briefs. But with experienced judges, you have to be careful. You don't want to be um, pontificating to some judge who knows as much as you about the law and, and really stick more to the facts. So I, I, in two recent cases, for example, I had two very experienced Superior Court justices. We won both sexual assault trials. I, did, I only had to touch on the law. I just remind them of a few key points. Now then, of course, most sexual assault trials, your client's testifying. So I want to highlight the, the areas of their evidence that creates reasonable doubt, highlight why they're a credible, reliable witnesses and why they testify with sincerity and, and why they, their evidence should be accepted. And there might be a little bit of application to the law. It, law sexual assault is a very complicated area. I might just touch on a few points for the judge. Sometimes I present a case brief of sentence uh, cases that, especially if it's a, a novel issue, uh, I might have to show even an experienced judge that a novel case. And then I ultimately wrap up. There's a case called WD from the Supreme Court of Canada. I, I, I ultimately explain why there's reasonable doubt based on the WD case. So that typically takes an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, it has to be organized very well. And it, it takes a lot of time. I mean, you, you're, the typical rape trial, for example, sexual assault trial might take uh, five, six, seven days of evidence. I've got to organize that every night, start preparing my submissions. So you're organizing like 30, 40, 50 hours of evidence into an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half presentation. Now, with jury matters, it's the same type of considerations. Don't get don't me wrong, I cover the same issues, but you also have to explain the law a little more carefully to the jury in a very um, uh, systematic and simplified way and and ultimately the jury the judge tells the the jury what the law is but you should explain it I explain it as well but I keep it more interesting if I will a little bit less pandemic where the judge wants to hear the points they don't they're not into the for the drama and elevation of voice and things like that with a jury you want to be a little bit more passionate with your presentation of my judges don't like that you just keep to the facts a little bit of passion goes a long way and, and a little bit of interest inflection in your voice but with the jury you really have to work on persuasion because there's a lot of emotion involved in jury and you have to keep it much shorter i mean i think i did a jury trial closing in a half hour once it's hard to do um, but nice to do if you can uh, 45 minutes an hour is hour max really beyond that i find i've seen some juries nodding off by the way despite my rhetoric and and keeping my passion up and but ultimately with a jury you have to to bring it home that look you 
you folks, you people are gonna go home at night. This person has to live with this the rest of the night. If there's reasonable doubt, you go into that jury room and find it, and there's reasonable doubt in this case. So it's, it's a real art form. To, to make proper sentencing, uh, proper closing submissions in court is an art form, and to really synthesize, it's not easy synthesizing like 40 or 50 hours of evidence into uh, a short presentation which hits the highlights and you, you need to, of course, remind the jurors that I may have forgotten something or something may be important that you thought I should have addressed and it's really an oversight of mine. You go in that jury room and you, you can think about it then on your own. But ultimately, with a jury trial, of course, the judge does a closing jury charge where the judge also reviews the evidence and explains the law and how they should apply the law. So it's a very interesting practice, you know, both as a Crown Attorney and Defense Counsel. It's a lot of work, a lot of preparation, and closing submissions are, are, are not easy to put together in a, in a very systematic and organized way. Thank you for watching our video. We are absolutely committed to bringing you the best possible criminal and DUI educational videos. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been charged with a criminal offense in Ontario and require our services, please click on the link in the description below.